Hey guys, welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Today I have another unboxing video for you. Unfortunately, Randy is not here today. He is on vacation, so I'm just gonna be doing this one solo this week. Um, so I'm actually gonna do this one more in like the weekly used gun review style. I'm just gonna bring in the camera over the table and unbox these guys for you. Uh, anyway, if that all sounds interesting to you, please stick around, that's coming up right now. All right, guys, doing this overhead, as mentioned, the first one here comes to us from a viewer in South Carolina. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it opened here for you. Okay, and I pulled two out of this one. Let me go ahead and get into these and get them out on the table for you guys. Okay, first up out of the box, we have an old SIG blue case. And what it looks like we have here is a SIG 5.56. This is in the Sporter configuration or the SCM model. Pull this out of here. Chambered in 5.56 as the name would suggest. So the 5.56 is somewhat of a commercial version of the SIG Arms um, 5.50 series. This is branded SIG, so probably came with it. Um, Six Hour would manufacture a series of the 5.56 rifle and the 5.50 rifle. Um, 5.50, 5.56, they had the A1. 5.50 A1? Can't remember exactly. They also had the XI versions, which were the Russian models in 762 by 39 but this is sort of a state com uh, compliant version for states that have certain restrictions on what the firearm could have. Of course, none of these are manufactured anymore, but they are really cool firearms nonetheless. I wish that they actually were still in production. So looking at the condition of this one, I would say just a couple little handling marks on it. I'd probably say very good. Uh, I have the paperwork here. Customer says, excellent. I mean, it's close enough. Uh, there's, without just a few little scratches on the barrel and I think one small nick on the receiver, I would probably go with excellent. So, I mean, it's close enough. So we will roll with it. Uh, there was another one in the box too. So let me get that out. Okay, this one I am unwrapping here for you guys. So we'll kind of look at it here together. Steyer AUG esque looking thing. It is not though, it is an MSAR. Get that out of here. Pull that flag out. Okay. <coughs> the MSAR. So Steyr I manufactured the AUG rifle. Uh, Steyr of Austria has been adopted by a lot of different countries. Uh, Australia had adopted the uh, AUG as well as Ireland, just to name a few. 5.56 NATO fed from a waffle pattern magazine, which I think I have a couple of over there that are wrapped up in bubble wrap, but I won't mess with those here. Steyr had imported these into the country. They had the integrated optic up at the top, which is sort of one of their most iconic features. Due to the 89 importation restriction, they could not come in any longer, so they are pretty far and few between here in the United States. Through the uh, 1994 ban under Clinton, they had come up with the with a ban compliant version. But then when the law was then redefined again under Boxer and uh, Feinstein, and I believe it was 1996 or 1998, even that variation of the AUG could not come in. So a company called MSAR, which is locally domestic, having the opportunity to sort of expand upon the limitation of there not being an actual AUG in the marketplace and the fact that a lot of people wanted them, they would manufacture these here domestically in the United States. But since then, Steyr now has domestic manufacturing. They have the AUG A3M1 uh, that sort of put the kibosh on MSAR, so they are no longer around. But that is what this is. Uh, condition on this one, I would say actually appears to be excellent. I don't see a single mark on it anywhere. Uh, the customer, I can go grab the paperwork. Customer does say excellent as well. So totally in agreement there. Let's move on to the next one. All right, next up is one that comes to us from the same seller in South Carolina. Paper out of the way. Let's open this first. Might cue us into what this is. Mm. 
Luger holster, which does... I can't tell if this is original or repro. It kind of looks like a repro to me. It looks like an old repro, though. But the, the leather is definitely old, but the markings are very, very strong. It's probably an older repro. P08 with the waffen amp. It just doesn't look right, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know holsters all too well. This is definitely a repro. Well, it's like old repro stuff. But anyway, let's move on here. That is a Luger holster. I am assured this is likely going to be a Luger. Let's see here. And it is very nice. So this is a, pull that out, 1937 dated, so it would be a Mauser. Uh, if I actually remember this one. See, 1937 dated, the uh, numbers were, yeah, mismatched. So, nine, oh, it's pretty much all mismatched. Like, every part on this is different. <laughs> so this is definitely made from parts. That's 42, but a good shooter. So the, see, small parts would have been straw colored. In 1937, that was a transitional year where they would have gone to all blued, sort of strawed in the first half of the year and all blued small parts in the latter half of the year. This has what it looks like a blued sort of trigger bar with the trigger, the takedown lever, the safety, and that would be at the magazine release or the original sort of straw coloring. This, if it's all black, it's got to be an FXO. It's not coded, so this is a repro magazine. And if we can look at... Everybody gets mad. I don't look at the board, but I'll look at the board. And this one, because this one's a shooter. It's not the best light in here. Board looks okay, a little dark. Uh, but yeah, something like this. It looks like all original finish, but it is a mix master of parts. Uh, no importation marks or anything, but 9404 on the barrel, 790 on the frame, 34 on the uh, side plate, 75 on the takedown lever, 9404 on the upper slide. So the slide and barrel are original to each other. 909090 on the toggle parts, which matches none of the other numbers. So yeah, just a cool shooter is really what this is. Um, for what it is and its age, actually I would probably, as far as Lugers go, I would call this good to very good. Let's see what the customer said. Customer said very good. I totally can go along with that. So yeah, that's totally fine. I'll bring this in a little bit closer for you guys, but now we're sort of not on autofocus, but very cool P08 Luger. All right, up next we have one from a customer in New York. So let's break into this one here. Paperwork's here. What we have here is a SIG P365XL. Of course, not in its original box, but that is okay. P365, you guys have seen a million of these on the channel. Came out several years ago. This is the XL version, so you have a longer slide and a longer frame. Um, optics ready, and it looks like there is an aftermarket rail section that has been added to this one. So pretty cool. Not really a lot to say about these that haven't already been said. Four magazines, non-factory box. If we look into the condition of this one, I would say it looks... Not really seeing any issue on it anywhere, any marks. I'd probably go with excellent on this one. It's very good condition. Let's see what the customer said. Customer said very good, so yeah, I mean, that works for us, but I would have definitely gone with excellent. But anyway, we will roll with it. Thank you very much for sending this one to us, and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, up next we have one that comes to us from a viewer in Texas, so thank you for selling this one to us. Jump into this. Freedom Ordinance, it's like an FX9. Yep, FX9, 9mm, and they take the Glock magazines. The FX9s, I've had several of these in here. They make really good little 9mm AR-15 carbines. They're not super ex expensive. Uh, SP Tactical Bra Brace, SP-83, I believe is what that one is. Um, guys, really not a lot to say about these. If you are interested in a little really compact 9mm AR pistol, 
These are a really good option, all metal construction, full pick rail up at the top. Um, yeah, not much else really to say about it, but anyway, guys, I know we have unboxed several of these before. But before I look, I'm gonna rate the condition of this thing. Looks a little more, no, oh, that looks fine. That looks fine. I would probably rate the condition of this at excellent. Honestly, it does not really even look like it's been fired. No, it's very clean. Sorry, the little door dinger thing is on. I'm filming this while we're open. Normally, we are closed when Randy and I film, but customer says very good. So yeah, uh, I would even say, yeah, every little mark that I'm seeing, I'm able to brush off of it. It's just residue from the cardboard. So yeah, we we'll definitely are, do not have a problem with that. Very nice pistol. And we will move on to the next one. All right, next up, we have one that comes to us from a viewer in Kentucky. So let's see what we got here. box and oh yeah I remember seeing this one this is one of the nicest 1911 SIG has ever made this is a SIG 1911 super target or ST stainless and this one is a 45 they made these in sort of this beautiful stainless uh, color configuration as well as in a uh, sort of like a matte blue with darker walnut grips these are sort of the lighter blonde color, which actually out of the two color configurations, I prefer this one. And who doesn't love stainless? Uh, call this, yeah, the STGT, the Super Target. SIG actually discontinued these from production, so you cannot find them anymore, at least brand new. So they're kind of relegated to the used market. But man, this one is in beautiful shape. There's just some handling marks like here and there, very small. You have to kind of be close up on it. I can See just a couple marks in the slide. I would probably rate this one at very good, but excellent would be fair as well. Um, wow, these things are awesome. This is just sort of the ultimate match competition 1911 that SIG had put out. And their standard base model 1911s are really good products too. Yeah, a little handling mark there. Uh, let's see what the customer said in terms of condition on this one. Customer rated it at excellent. I'll take that, that's fair. Um, Beautiful handgun, uh, but anyway, not much else to say about it. Other than let you guys take a look at that, but let's move on to the next one. All right, up next we have one from a customer in Colorado, so thank you for selling us this one. Let's see what we got. All right, another SIG. This is a SIG P320 TAC Ops with threaded barrel and let's see here, four magazine. Um, six hour P320 guys, we've had a ton of them on here before. Uh, this is currently what the United States military is using as their standard issue sidearm as the M17 one through the XM17 handgun trials. Not exactly in this configuration, but close. This has high, high profile sights, of course, to clear the suppressor. They are night sights. And these are extended 21 round magazines, comes with four of them. So pretty cool little package. Um, again, not much else really to say about it, you guys, but the SIG P320 uh, condition wise on this, I'm gonna go, there's a little bit of wear on the barrel. Actually, a lot of that rubbed off and everything that we're getting today is really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and rate this one at excellent. I mean, it looks like new, Let's see what the customer said. Uh, he, rate, he rated it in excellent condition also. I totally agree. So there is that one. Let's move on to the next. All right, I know none of you guys are gonna be able to see this fully. But this is a large box and this one comes to us from a customer in Arkansas. So I'm gonna jump into it now. Okay, and inside the box is another box covered in paper. Okay, let's uh, do a Christmas. It definitely does. It feels like Christmas. This is an I. WI, Israeli Weapons Industries. Okay, <laughs> what we have here, almost. Is. Yeah. 
We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. This is a Tavor, and I'll clear this real quick and get it in front of the camera. Okay, we are clear. This is an X95 Tavor. Now, the original SAR uh, version, which you guys have seen on our videos before, I have one on the website as well as I had one in a recent weekly used gun review. The X95 would have come after that. It was actually more of the compact version of the SAR, and it was um, because of importation restrictions, they did have to kind of lengthen the rifle to make it importable into the United States. But the actual Israeli version is a little bit smaller than this, making it an even more compact bullpup design. So really cool firearms. It's what the IDF is currently using among a few other things. The IDF has always had sort of a hodgepodge of firearms, but the X95 is sort of good. Sorry, John just came in and needed my attention on something out front. Again, a little bit more difficult when we're doing these during the day. Uh, don't quite remember where I left off, but one interesting feature about this particular one is it actually uses the Colt style double stack magazines. This one is a nine millimeter. So there you go, kind of different and interesting, <laughs> but definitely gonna be a fun range toy. Now, if we look at condition on this one, uh, looking it over, I actually do not see any issues at all. It looks like new, so of course I would call this one excellent. Look at the customer set. Customer set excellent as well. So definitely a uh, no problems there. So anyway, this is going to end it up for us today. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. If you want to see more content like this, please consider subscribing. I know this one was a little bit different, being that it's sort of a weekly used gun review format and Randy is not here. So we'll get back to the regularly scheduled unboxing videos in the normal format uh, when Randy gets back from vacation. Thanks guys for coming and joining me today on this one. I will see you next time.